Thanks very much again. My name is Aristides Bampakos, but you can call me Aris because uh, my name is a bit difficult to pronounce in, uh, in English or in any other language. Uh, today I'm very happy that I will uh, present a topic that is very interesting but also unusual in the world of front-end web development. Today we're going to see how we can build desktop applications using web technologies. And when we say web technologies, we mean, of course, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. More specifically, we are going to learn how to integrate two great frameworks, Angular and Electron JS, to create such a desktop application. So, some things about me. Uh, I am a co-organizer in an Angular meetup, just like uh, the Kharkiv meetup, uh, which is called Angular Athens, because I'm from Greece, and Athens is the capital of Greece. I work as a front-end web developer at a company called PlexEarth, where I specialize mainly in the Angular development. And I work also as a contractor uh, in a private academic institution called CodeHub, where we teach uh, other developers and individuals about the Angular framework. When I'm not uh, coding, I maintain my own blog at Medium, and I write uh, usually or almost uh, always about Angular. In the last six months, I was writing my first book uh, in Angular, which was announced uh, later this month uh, for pre-ordering. It is uh, the title of the book is Learning Angular 10, and it is destined for uh, beginners to the Angular framework. Uh, it teaches you how to start a new Angular application using the Angular CLI, how to scaffold it, how to add all these useful features that Angular Framework has, like forms, routing, Angular material. And then it learns you how to deploy to a hosting provider and see your result. Uh, I have put these links, uh, these two links, in the slides so you can get them if you're interested. Um, I'm an active contributor at the, open, at the GitHub open source community, and my two main focus areas are, of course, Angular, where I'm also an occasional contributor to the official uh, Angular documentation in angular.io. And also, I like to, uh, I like uh, uh, 3D maps and geospatial libraries, like Cesium that you see on uh, your left hand side of the screen. Uh, Cesium is a popular JavaScript library for building, for creating 3D maps. Uh, also, in my GitHub profile, I have created a proof of concept application that showcases Angular and Angular material, and it integrates with the Marvel API. So, if you're a fan of super of the Marvel heroes or superheroes generally, go check this out. It has a lot of I describe a lot of techniques that you can use uh, when that you can use when you have Angular and Angular material together. So, as I said before, I work as a front-end web developer at uh, PlexEarth, but PlexEarth is not the actual company. It is a software that is developed by a company called PlexScape. It is the first ever desktop cloud-based software that was developed for the architectural engineering and construction industry. Uh, it works as a plugin in a very famous, in, in the most well-known CAD uh, software systems. A CAD system is a software that is used, for those, for those that don't know, is a software that is used from civil engineers, civil engineers and architects to build their own 3D models, for example, buildings, uh, houses, uh, theaters, stuff like that. So PlexServe is a plugin in those uh, CAD software. The most well-known software that we cooperate with is the AutoCAD, and actually, Plex, PlexEarth enables engineers and uh, architects to visualize their 3D models in the actual world of Google Earth or other maps, for example, Google Maps, Bing Maps, different map providers. Excuse me. So, uh, most of our clients are active in the USA and the Canada industry, about 92 to 93 percent. And uh, some of them, some of the most uh, well-known, are the circuit team of Formula One, Ecom, and Garver. 
So in this image on the top, you can see Plex Earth, uh, which is uh, installed inside AutoCAD. As I said before, AutoCAD is the most well-known uh, CAD software. You can see that uh, Plex Earth has a lot of commands uh, that they, they are organized as a ribbon. So the user can select from the ribbon uh, which command to execute. Now, the main features of Plex Earth are three. The first one is that it can import satellite images from map providers inside a CAD software, which is what we call import imagery. The second one is that it can import terrain uh, images. And the third one is that it can export uh, from a CAD software like AutoCAD a 3D model to Google Earth. So you can actually see a house that you're building inside Google Earth. Today, we're going to talk about the first one, which is how to import satellite images inside uh, using the Plex Earth. So Plex Earth uh, has three ways to import imagery. The first one is using uh, satellite providers, just like Maxar, uh, Digital Globe, or Hexagon. Typically, these providers have their own satellites or small aeroplanes, and they can take their and they, and they can take satellite images by themselves. The first way is using an intermediate map map provider like Google Maps or Bing Maps. Uh, these providers usually, not always, uh, don't have a way of uh, taking their own images. So they take they take them from the satellite providers above. And the third way is by using a custom uh, application that we have developed at Plexscape, which is called Map Explorer. With Map Explorer, you can create a custom map using all the above providers, and you can import it inside AutoCAD. Now, uh, at this point, I would like to tell you how we visualize maps inside Plexscape. Suppose that we want to create, you are a civil engineer and you want to, uh, create, to create a map that displays the United States of America, uh, only the borders and with different background color. So what would you do? You would create a map using Map Explorer with three distinct layers. On the bottom, uh, which is usually called the base map, we put a layer that takes over all the globe, all the world. For example, Google Maps or Bing Maps. On top of that, we place another layer which displays only the borders on the United States, not the whole world. And on top of that, we place the actual layer that we want to display, which is a different background color for each United State. Again, in this place, not all the world. So you can imagine that a map is uh, consists of many layers, and these layers uh, are like the slides that you overlay when you want to you, to project something on a screen on a projector. Uh, at this uh, point, I would like to show you a video that we have created for this uh, talk uh, that describes how Map Explorer is used inside the uh, AutoCAD. Okay. Right. So here we're in the AutoCAD environment. We click Map Explorer and uh, the Map Explorer will open. This is Map Explorer. We have already put a base map on the bottom. And we now add another layer on top of the base map, which is called the SRI. The SRI is a very well known map provider. So this is on, on the top of OpenStreetMaps. And now we will place on top of the other two our actual layer that will display a, rail net, a railway network of a, of a city. Sorry about the name, which is in Greek, but the video was created in Greek. Sorry about that. So here we select uh, the layer, the style of the layer that we are interested in. which is the railway network. And when we create, when we click create, you can see the blue lines are the railway network 
of the city that we would like to visualize. So we have created our map. We can toggle uh, each uh, layer so we can hide or we can show. Now we close the map explorer and we select the area on the AutoCAD in which we want to import the map that we have created. Now Plex Earth uh, starts downloading uh, the map and finally it will place it inside our uh, drawing, our project. So here it is. So this is how we create maps using Plex Earth and Map Explorer inside AutoCAD. So, um, as you can see here, the icon of Map Explorer, uh, this is not its icon, I, I just put it to explain how we build Map Explorer. Map, Ex Map Explorer is actually an Angular application that is uh, built, no, that is packaged inside an Electron desktop application. Okay, so Plexerf, uh, so Map Explorer is, uh, is not the same application as Plexerf. They are two separate uh, executables. So today I'm gonna, uh, we're gonna see how we approach how we build Map Explorer using Angular and Electron, and then we're going to apply some of the techniques uh, to create, um, to integrate the uh, what you see, what you get editor that Stepan has created. It is an open source uh, editor. I will show it to you later, and we will run it either as a desktop application or a web application. We will have two different versions of the same application. So, I have already told you that uh, Map Explorer is an Angular application. I think we all know about Angular, don't we? Uh, so, what is Electron? E Electron is a cross-platform JavaScript framework that allows you to create desktop applications using web technologies. It is an NPM package, so we can uh, normally install it using NPM install Electron. Now, it is built on top of Chromium, Node.js and the V8 engine of Chrome and it actually contains a version of Node.js and Chromium inside. And that is why uh, most of uh, Electron applications, their executables are very large. For example, uh, you can imagine that uh, Map Explorer, the total, uh, the total size of the executable application is about 97 megabytes, and 3 megabytes our, is our application code. The remaining 94 is the runtime of Electron because it contains inside Node.js and Chromium. So, many popular applications have been built with Electron, such as Visual Studio Code that I think we all use, or Slack and Sky. Uh, the main advantage of Electron is that you can, if you are a web developer, you can leverage your existing web skills to create a desktop application without the need to learn a new desktop language, for example, C, C++ or C Sharp. <coughs> Excuse me. So, <coughs> let's see about uh, the Electron architecture. Uh, an Electron application consists of two main, of two processes. The main process that is responsible for uh, heavy duty tasks and calculations such as interacting with the file system and it is this process that provides access to the native resources of your machine using the API of Node.js and the renderer process which is responsible for managing only the user interface. For example, uh, it, you can imagine that it is a single index.html file that includes your application CSS and JavaScript files. <coughs> now, uh, Electron follows the multi-process uh, architecture of Chromium. So, in every Electron application, we can only have one main process that can communicate with different render processes. Each of the render, each render process operates in complete isolation. So, it is not advisable, and we shouldn't communicate 
from one renderer process to another directly, but instead we should go through the main process. The main process orchestrates the communication between of them. So here is a snippet how you could create a renderer process. We could use the browser window class to create a brow uh, to create an application window, we, and we would uh, we would pass some properties such as width and height. Of course, there are many more properties if you go to the electron documentation website. And then we use the load file method to pass the HTML file that we want to render. So this code is written in the main process, but creates the render process. Okay, the browser window is the render process. If you want to learn more about uh, Electron applications, except of what you will see here today, uh, you can check out uh, a guest uh, talk that I did in Real Talk JavaScript, uh, where, we where I, I talked about building secure Electron applications. You can check out this, uh, this link that I will put on the slides. Excuse me. So, as I said before, uh, no, I didn't say before, sorry. Map Explorer was always inside Plex Earth. It was embedded inside Plex Earth, okay? It was written in the same application. But we decided to rewrite it from scratch uh, using Angular because uh, we would like to enable collaboration between diff different types of users and environments. For example, imagine that you are a civil engineer that is you sits in front of your office and you want you're using AutoCAD and you want to import a map inside AutoCAD. So you open the desktop version of Map Explorer, you select the map as we saw in the video and you import it inside. Now this map could have been created by an administrator maybe uh, by accessing a web interface of Map Explorer of the same application. Now, Map Explorer is not just an ordinary desktop application. We, we don't just render a web application inside the Electron. The Electron is our uh, backend API. Map Explorer doesn't have a backend API. All user data are kept in the local file system in JSON format. So, when we decided to rewrite it, the main consideration was how we could, uh, up, how we could uh, we could uh, communicate between the between PlexSurf and Map Explorer uh, processes because there are two different executables. So how would we communicate between them? So we took uh, three approaches. We created three prototypes until we uh, we finally shipped the final version. Let's see one by one. In the first prototype, we used a Signal R library, which I think. It's developed by Microsoft. It is a socket-based library. So we had Plexers and Map Explorer connect to a central signal hub on the web and exchange messages each other. So we implemented signal R connectivity inside Angular, not inside Electron. The main drawback in this approach was that uh, signal R has a latency because you must connect to the web. So the, uh, the round trip time for sending a message and receiving a response inside the same machine, it was very noticeable. So we abandoned this prototype and we started a new one. At this, in this uh, second prototype, we used a, a, a new approach. We used another toolkit, which is called ACA. ACA is used for building distributed peer-to-peer distributed -peer applications. Initially, it was created for Java, but later it was ported to C Sharp, which was something that uh, we would like to do. So, uh, Akai is based on an actor architecture. For example, you have a parent process and some children process that can communicate each other. So, initially, uh, in the side of Plex Earth, we used a port of Aka for .NET, which is called Aka.NET that created uh, the parent process. Now, the, the real challenge was how we could communicate with the parent process, which was .NET, and the Node.js process, which was Map Explorer. So what we did, we used a library called edge.js, 
uh, which is used to run .NET and Node.js code in the same process. Particularly, we used a, a port of this library called Electron-Edge, and we executed and loaded a C# -sharp script, load actor, and it was this script that actually boot, uh, created the child process. So we had the parent process, and now we had the child process. We could communicate effectively. Again, there was there were some drawbacks. Uh, the first one was that the support of uh, HJS were ve was very poor and the documentation, it, it wasn't enough. Uh, but the most major drawback in this approach was that we were forced to use the remote object of Electron API to communicate between the main and the render process of Electron. So what, did, what, did, what is it the remote object? The remote object is exposed from the main process and the main process can attach some global variables on it. For example, uh, the main process would attach the FS library, which is for file system interaction, inside this remote object. So then, this is the main process. So later, on the render process, we could access the remote object and get this global variable, fs, and start interacting with the file system. Okay, so Aris, you are telling me that I could interact with the file system from the render, which is an HTML file. Yeah, right. Is this secure? Is this, does it have any problems? Is it alright to do this? Of course not. You know, we all know, I believe that uh, accessing the file system from an HTML page is dangerous. So the remote object has been considered harmful. I have put an article at the end, uh, at the last slide, that uh, it was uh, it was written inside Medium blog, uh, not from me, and explains why we should not use the remote object in electron applications. Now, if you're using remote object, you should disable it. And how would you do that? We would set the flag enable, rem enable remote module to false, which is inside the web preferences property of the browser window. So now, even if the main uh, process exports uh, some native APIs, the render process will not be able to use them. So we are more secure. But again, as I told you before, we didn't go with this approach. So we did the final and last, the last prototype, prototype number three, which surprisingly, we decided to use old plain uh, files, you know, old school. Uh, so, Lexerf could start Map Explorer using the command line. It passes uh, a file, a JSON file. You can think of it as the angular.json file that we pass in the Angular CLI. Okay. So, this map.json file, uh, it is passed from the command line parameters and contains commands that Map Explorer must execute. Now, these commands are uh, of uh, are kind of commands go somewhere and take a picture uh, from of the map, go somewhere else and take another picture from the map. So, as soon as Map Explorer completes all the commands, it writes them to the file system, and then Plexerf can go to the file system and uh, get uh, the result. Again, we we decided to go with this approach. We know that it is not real-time communication. Okay, we know file system interaction is not so real-time. It has its problems. But currently, we're in uh, the lookout for a new um, for new approaches. But for first version, this approach was okay. So the good thing in this prototype, in the third prototype, was that we got rid of uh, the remote object. And how did we do that? We used uh, IPC communication to exchange messages between the main and the render process. It is a technique that allows you to uh, exchange messages asynchronously between the two processes. So, in the main process, we use the IPC main object and we especially, the, particularly, the handle method to add some kind of event listener. 
we give it a name, get data, and then we pass as, a, as the second argument in the method a narrow function. This narrow function will be executed when someone calls the event get data. Now, in the render process, we use a similar object, which is called IPC renderer. And now we use the invoke method to call the event that we registered before. If we want to pass additional data to this event, we can use the second uh, parameter of the invoke method. Now, notice here the async and await syntax that we are using. IPC communication is promise based. So we can use async await uh, normally as, as we want. And in conjunction, in, uh, together with the polyfills that Angular provides, you can use it everywhere nowadays. And now the real good stuff. <laughs> Sorry. Now, when we started to, um, to look for an, a starter pack, a starter guide or some boilerplate code to integrate Angular with Electron, we found a repository that was maintained by the Angular team, which was called Angular Das Electron. And I think that, I don't know how it works internally, but I, I believe that it tries to create an Electron renderer, just like we have render two and render three. And I think it would be the same, con it is the same concept as with the pre-rendering. It's another render. But unfortunately, after some months that we found it, uh, they decided to abandon it. Abandoned it. Uh, so we, we, we decided to, uh, to create our own custom solution that I will show you today. Uh, and I hope you will find it interesting. So let's switch to the demo code. Okay. So, uh, in, for the demo, we will use the, um, this, uh, what you see is what you get the editor that I told you before, which is created by my friend Stepan. I'm an active contributor to this library. It has also an AngularJS version, which is maintained, by the way, even today. <laughs> and uh, we're going to build two versions of, uh, of, an, of this application. One that integrates with this editor and uh, it is rendered inside the web application, inside the browser, and another one that integrates inside Electron. So you can think of it as a, what you see, what you, as a desktop version of the NGX Week editor. So, I hope you can see my screen. Right. Let me zoom it. Okay. Let's first see the package.json file. If we go to dependencies, sorry, to dev dependencies, we can see that we have installed Electron. Okay, Electron is a development dependency because we are not using it runtime for to our application, but we only use it to build our application. Now, in the dependencies uh, property, in the dependencies object, we have ngx wig, which is the editor that we want to integrate, and we also have ngx dash electron. This is a wrapper uh, API library that sits on top of electron and exposes all electron API. Of course, you could create your own. You can create your own wrapper. It's not obligatory to just use this, but uh, you know I'm a fan of boilerplate code. So uh, if there is something that I, could, I can use and is it is created in the Angular ecosystem, I would prefer it. So if we go up to the scripts here, we can see two pairs. There is a pair for the start script, and there is a pair for the build. Now, the start is used to uh, serve the application, the, the application in the browser. The start electron is used 
to serve the electron, the desktop version of our application. And the same uh, is valid for the build. Build is to build the web uh, version. Build the electron is to build the desktop version. So please remember that uh, when we build the electron and the angular application, uh, sorry, the angular and the electron parts of our application, we put them inside the same this folder, inside the folder that Angular CLI puts the Angular build. And we do this so that we can help later our packager uh, to uh, get to fetch all the files together and create our Excel, our executable file, our electron executable file. So if we go here in the folders, in the structure, uh, we can see the app folder, which contains the Angular application, and the Electron folder, which contains our Electron application. Let's see first the Angular one. Now, every editor needs to get some content and to set some content. Okay, you write something, you want to be persistent. When you open uh, the editor, you want, sometimes you will want to get uh, the data that you wrote. So we have created an Angular service called editor service that contains two methods. The get content, which, uh, sorry, let's see the first, the set content. The set content takes whatever content it passes uh, into, this, into the method and writes it inside the local storage. Pretty, pretty simple. Now the get content reads the local storage and uh, if, there is no, if, if there is anything inside it, we, we return an empty string and we also use a question, question marks. It is a new feature of uh, the TypeScript. I think it was introduced in 3.9. It essentially means that if this uh, statement is null or undefined and nothing else. And then, if, when we, uh, as soon as we have the content, we return, we return it as a promise. And it is uh, significant. I want uh, it is significant that we return we, we return it as a promise because in the editor we will use the async await syntax. Okay. So if we go now to the component, we have only one component, the app component. We can see the template here, which is the ngx wig editor. We use the ng model to display the content, and when the content changes we save the content, okay? So the save content method calls the set content method of the editor service. And in the ng on init method, we call the get content method of the service. Look at this, this is a sync await syntax that uh, I described you before, okay? There is a purpose that we use async await, you will see it later. So let's run the application in uh, in web uh, mode. Okay. So I will use. I have a very nice uh, extension called NX Console that uh, helps me when uh, interacting with Angular CLI. It is created from uh, Narwhal. So I will serve it. Okay. I don't want any additional parameters to pass. I just click run. Oops. Um, and we just wait. Okay, the build is over. Let's open on the browser. Okay. You can see here, this is the editor on the edge week. I can write, okay. I can put styling. And if I refresh my page, it remains on the, it remains because it has been kept in the local storage. So let's see how would we would do this with Electron as a desktop application. Okay, 
Inside the app folder, we have created another service, which is called Editor Local Service. This is a service that interacts with the Electron API. We inject a, a class called Electron Service, which is contained inside the library, the wrapper library that I explained before. If you notice, the, it has the same methods and the same, and the methods have the same signature as the editor service that we saw before, except that it does not interact with the local storage, but the IPC renderer object to communicate with the main process that we will see later. Okay, so the get content says to the IPC renderer, uh, call the get content method. And the set content calls the set content method of the main process and passes the content also. Pretty straightforward, okay. So, how our application knows which service uh, to choose? If we go to the app module, in the providers, you will see that we use uh, the, the provide object the all provide object literal syntax to decide which service we will serve according to a factory. So we say that when someone asks for the editor service, when a component injects the editor service, use the factory editor factory to decide which one. If we go to the editor factory here, we inject the electron service obviously, and we say that. If our environment is not desktop, create the editor service and return it. Otherwise, create the editor local service and pass also the electron dependency. So this is how we benefit from the Angular dependency injection mechanism by replacing uh, Angular services based on the environment that we run. Now, this desktop property in the environment, if we go to the environments, we can see that the, we have three. We have the default one, which is not desktop, of course. The prod one, which doesn't have it, because there is a reason that it doesn't have it. And we have also the electron one, which says that it's not production, but it is desktop. And we say that it is not production because it is not Angular CLI related. Okay. So, and this is, from the app module here, this is how it decides which one to load. Now, let's go to the Electron part. The Electron part is the Electron folder. It contains three files. The main.ts, which is the main entry point of uh, our Electron application. It is similar to the main.ts of the Angular application. We have a package.json that uh, it is needed from the packager library that we use to package our application as a desktop. And we have a TS config because we we write we write Electron in TypeScript, so we will need a compiler. If we open the main.ts file, you can see here that we have a function called create window that essentially creates a browser window instance. It passes the width and the height, and also sets a property which is called node integration. Now this property is needed from the ngx electron uh, wrapper library uh, to enable node.js in the render process and it is it, normally we shouldn't do that it's not safe either but uh, the library needs it so uh, as far as i know the maintainer tries to find a solution to get rid of this so as soon as we have created the main window we call the load file method and we pass the html file now, uh, after that, we use the app object. Now, the app object is our Electron application, okay? It's the application object. Now, in this application object, we can attach as many windows, browser windows, as we want. So here we say that when the application is ready, okay, and the promise has been resolved of the when ready app, uh, uh, promise, create the window because we need to make sure that we will create the window after the application is ready. Now, if we go to the bottom, we can see two methods. Okay, the first one is for getting the content and the second one for setting the content. 
Let's go to the first one. We use the IPC main object, as we saw in the slides. Uh, we use the handle method. We name the event get content. Now this name must match the name that we use from the Angular application. And when someone calls the get content uh, event, what we do, we check if there is already content. We check if there is a file inside our uh, inside our uh, inside, inside our file system, and then if there is. Oh, this file is in a specific path, okay? So if there is, we read it and we return uh, the data to the caller. Now, before the, Angular, the web version of our application interacts with the local storage. The desktop version interacts with local files, okay? So this file that you see here, the content file, it is defined up here. It is called content.html, which is the content of the editor that we write. And it, you can find it in the path user data. It is, um, I think user data is uh, in Windows is app data. It is something reserved. It is a reserved path. So the set content uh, operates similarly, but here we also pass uh, a property that it is the content that we write from the editor. So when someone calls the set content, we write the file synchronously uh, inside the path that we saw before. For all this file interaction, we use the FS uh, library. Okay, so you can see here that I, we don't expose the FS into the renderer. Instead, we use IPC communication and the FS uh, interaction remains inside the main, uh, the bounds of the main process. So if we go to the package.json file, okay, where is it? Sorry. No. Inside, let's see first the start electron. Okay, the start electron uh, command is similar to the start, but it creates the, the, the desktop uh, version of our app. So what we do, we use the concurrently package to simultaneously run the Angular, C, the Angular application build and the Electron build. The Angular application build operates with the Electron environment that we saw earlier. And we don't delete the output path because I saw you at the beginning that in the same path, we will have also the output from the Electron uh, application. And we started with mo watch mode. Simultaneously, we run the webpack with a dev configuration that we have created in watch mode. If you see here, we have three configurations for webpack. One for development, for the start uh, script, one for the production, when we create a build of our application, and the, uh, the one without dev or prod work is the base one. The dev and the prod extend uh, from the base one. Okay, so if we, if we run the start electron script now, you can see that it starts uh, building the electron version first here, and then it starts building the Angular application. compilation process. So if I click start electron, it starts compiling. It compiles first the electron uh, side of the application and then it will start the angular. Okay, we can see that the Angular has completed. If we now uh, click uh, debug start electron, I have actually created a launch.json file here that uh, it allows us to debug the application and we can also put breakpoints. So if we click debug, we can see that it opens up the electron window, uh, the desktop, our application in a desktop window electron. Uh, we can see the editor here. We can write, 
if we close it and run it again, the content is there because it is saving the content inside the HTML file locally. We, we, we have also here a menu, uh, which is, uh, this, is by, this is added by default when running Electron in development mode. And if you see here, this window is an actual common window. It has its own developer tools. So if I click view toggle developer tools, we can see that it has console elements, we can inspect and the usual things with uh, Google Chrome. So now, um, I will not go into much detail with these different uh, Webpack configurations. I just wanted to show you uh, only the packaging process. How do we package the application in an Electron, in a desktop application, finally, uh, which is what we would like to do. Uh, so if we go to the package.json, we can see that there is a script called package. It uses the Electron Packager, an open source library uh, that is driven by the community. And we pass three, three options. The source of uh, the, the path uh, that uh, the path of the directory that our files exist, which is the dist folder. Uh, the output directory that we want to output the bundled application and the, another switch called ASAR. ASAR is the file for, it's the zip file format uh, of the Electron world. It's the like .zip, okay? So if you, if you can see, if you see a NASA file, you can open it with any zip client. Um, so first, before calling the package, we just need to call this build Electron script that uh, it, it uh, creates two uh, it runs two commands. The first one is that it builds the Angular application, passing all the switches of the Angular CLI for production. We pass it manually here. And then we compile the Electron part of our application with another configuration file called prod.config. So if I run it, It starts compiling the Angular application first. Okay, and now it starts compiling the Electron application. It is finished. So now we can run the package script that will take all the files inside the dist folder. Let me delete, this is, one, this is from the previous attempt. Now it will take all the files inside here and will package it in an Electron uh, application. So if we run package, it reboots up the Electron Packager uh, library and it is packaging the application for Windows. The Electron Packager supports three environments, three operating systems, Windows, Linux, and Mac. Also, I recently found out that you can build, uh, an, uh, that you can bundle the, an Electron application for Windows when you're developing from Mac. Wow, that's pretty awesome. So if we go to the disk folder here, we can see this is the folder that was created. This is our bundled version of the application. This is the executable file, which um, it is the runtime of Electron. If you see here, it says 105 megabytes. Okay, now in this 105 megabytes, it, it, there, is no, there is not our application. Our application resides in the resources folder inside the ASAR file, which is 200, 241 kilobytes. I mean, okay, this is, this is very, very much, uh, the, the difference is very large. You know, you just package a 241 kilobytes application with 110 megabytes. I mean, it's impressive. This is a major drawback. Okay, so uh, the last thing that I would like to tell is that in the browser list RC, browser list RC uh, file, uh, in the recent version of Angular 10, uh, the Angular team has modified it to include only the latest versions of all 
browsers. Now, for Electron, we could get rid of Firefox, iOS, and Edge because we don't need them. Electron in is a Chromium, is it is based on Chromium. So we could just have this last one Chrome version or last two. Now, in this case, you could modify your solution and have two browser list RC files. One for the Angular, one for the web uh, version of the application, and another one for the desktop version. So in this last uh, slide, I have put my communication details. I have put also some resources and the link uh, of the sample that I'll show you. Uh, today, we see, to sum up, we show how we use Angular and Electron inside the Map Explorer. Um, and then we show how we can apply the same similar techniques in an application that integrates with a what you see is what you get editor. So you can start from tomorrow and take your Angular application and build it with Electron and have two different versions, one web, one desktop. So uh, I hope you find it interesting and uh, that's it. Thanks very much for the talk. Thank you very much for your presentation. It was such a deep in Electron. I think for those who wanted to start Electron, that was quite nice knowledge. So we have some questions after. Uh, don't forget that you can uh, somehow indicate that you want to ask question uh, by voice, indicated in chat, and I'm start asking questions that you already collected in Slido. Uh, first one from Vitaly. Uh, in our world, uh, when the progressive app is supported by all platforms, still we have a need in Electron. I mean, do we need, do we, do we still have a need in Electron? Uh, no, you can, um, Electron, according to your needs, can be replaced by a progressive web app. It, at the end of the day, it is what you want to do. Uh, our product is desktop based. It is not web based. So we, so we couldn't go with a progressive web app. We, because we would, we would not have this, this type of interaction between the two different executables. But if you just want to render a web application as a desktop and you don't have so many complicated interaction, I would go with progressive web apps. Just to extend this question, uh, do we have any possibility uh, to create the dependency for such app because uh, for example if desktop has several electron application and all of them are using the same chromium core and not gs core could we just before installation process say user install them and then other electron app will use this installation and then app will has a small size because for example you say three electron apps slack ps code so they're inside using the duplication yeah right now you can't select uh, if i understand your question correctly you can't select which chromium version you want to include or if you want to include chromium at all or if you want to include an alternative to chromium there was a a project again from Google, not from Angular team, that was abandoned recently. I don't know what's going on with all of these abandoned projects. Um, it was called Carlo, Carlo, and uh, what did they do? They were uh, rendering an application as a desktop, like the Electron, but uh, the application would use the Chromium, the installed Chromium of your system. So the final bundle as you can understand, it would be smaller because it would not bundle the Chrome inside. But uh, I don't know why this uh, project was abandoned also. It would be so, would be so nice if, if it would be possible to use this, the same components, reuse the same components many times. 
Again, next one. Do you think that Angular and Electron can play nicely together after all? Um, yes, I think so. Uh, you know, our case at Plexelf is um, very challenging. We have to do, uh, we, have, we have maps, okay? And rendering a map is a real challenging thing to do. Very uh, memory consuming, stuff like that. But according to my experience, Angular with Electron has proved very, um, very, you know, good on uh, cooperating each other. I mean, whenever asks me, whenever someone asks me, uh, shall I use Ag Angular and Electron for this type of application? I, I tell them there's, there's no such, there's not a framework suitable for only one type of application. Okay. To be honest, in our industry, in the mapping industry, uh, maybe the other framework that I don't tell its name <laughs> would be a better choice. But finally, in our case, it seems that Angular and Electron plays nicely. And thank God, because we are all Angular developers, and uh, we wouldn't want to select another framework for this. OK, thank you. And very related question, how would you compare Electron to Cordova for the opportunities? Who? What, did, what, the, what was the second? Cordova. Name? Cordova. Ah, I, uh, I, I don't think this is a related question anymore, because today, uh, Cordova announced that they will uh, deprecate this, uh, the whole service, the whole uh, phone gap and phone gap, Adobe phone gap Cordova service. So I think that uh, they are pretty different. I wouldn't compare them. Okay, thank you. Cordova, Cordova also is more, it was more of for mobiles, not so but much for they have They have modules uh, for desktop solution. I'm pretty sure because they did it for desktop. All right, I didn't know that. I know for sure that Ionic has a pretty decent uh, solution with uh, Cordova, Electron, and Web that does uh, these type of things. Okay, good. And probably the last one. Uh, are there any libraries or starter packs for Angular and Electron? There is a a good starter pack called uh, Angular Dash Electron, uh, which is open source. You can find it on GitHub. Uh, the guys that maintain uh, do a very good job, and uh, I think this is the this is the the most well known library. There are not so many libraries about Angular and Electron outside out there, you know. Because Electron is a, is a technology not very so well embraced by the community. They want, they, they prefer to write the desktop applications using other, other languages such as C, Sharp, .NET, instead of using web technologies. 